Hello, my name is Tomasz Jaszek and in this video I will show a solution to the Gamish Challenge 2021 powered by Codility. In this challenge we are giving a string consisting of letters A and B, but on some positions in the string uh, the letters may be missing. Our task is to fill such positions with letters A and B uh, in such a way that the longest fragment of the string consisting of the same letters will be as short as possible. Let's analyze an example. Here we have a string of length 7 with two letters A, two missing positions and three letters B. If we replace the missing letters with A's, then we will have two maximal fragments of the same letters, a fragment with four A's and fragment with three B's. So the longest fragment is of size 4. To minimize the length of such fragment, it is better to replace the missing part with BA. Then the fragment of consecutive letters are of sizes 2, 1, 1 and 3 and the longest one is 3. Since we cannot eliminate this fragment of three consecutive B's from the initial string, this is indeed the optimal answer for this sample case. Let's analyze some more examples to get a feeling about the problem. When there are no missing letters in the string, then we just have to calculate the lengths of the fragments of the same letters. and return the biggest length. This can be easily done in a linear time by iterating over the string from left to right, increasing the length of the current fragment if the current letter is the same as previous one, or resetting the length to zero uh, if the letter is different. The other extremal case is when all the letters in the string are missing and we have full freedom to fill the gaps. So if we put letters A and B alternately, uh, we will get the smallest possible answer because every fragment will have the smallest possible length of one. Okay, so let's move to the general case. What if we have a mixture of fixed and missing letters? Then we can get different answer depending on the letters we choose to put in the gaps because the new letters can extend the fragments of fixed letters, increasing uh, their length, and we would like to avoid it if possible. For instance, putting A in the gap of the first word will merge two fragments of A into a big fragment of length 5, whereas putting B instead will separate these fragments for good, and the answer will be 2. However, sometimes increase in length cannot be avoided. In the second word, no matter what letter we'll put into the gap, we will either extend uh, the fragment of two A's into three A's, or fragment of two B's into three B's. So the answer will be three. But this was because the neighboring fragments of A's and B's had the same length. If the lengths were different, then putting the letter from the shorter fragment won't increase the answer. This is also true for longer gaps of missing letters, which give us more room to put the letters that don't extend the fixed fragments. And before I show how to use uh, this room in all cases in order to not increase the length of the fragments, uh, I would like to discuss uh, one more special case. We said before that if all letters are missing, then it's easy to construct a solution in which the length of the longest block is 1. Since in this case the letters must alternate, there are only two such solutions, uh, the one starting with A and the other one starting with B. So by examining whether we can fill our string with uh, one of these, we can in linear time test whether the answer is in fact one. 
So from now on, I will assume that we have performed this initial test and it failed. So the answer must be at least two. So now let's analyze the general procedure of filling the gaps that does not increase the lengths of neighboring fragments. We'll consider four cases depending on whether the fragments have the same of or different letters and uh, on parity of the length of the gap. Since we don't want to extend the lengths of the neighboring fragments, the letters at the beginnings and the ends of the fragments are forced to be different than the letters of the corresponding fragments. At the same time, we don't want to introduce new long fragments inside the gaps. So once again, we will use this pattern of alternate letters. We can see that in two cases, this pattern nicely fit inside the gap. But in the remaining two cases, we were forced to construct additional fragment of size two. But since we already assumed that the answer is at least two, these additional fragments won't hurt us. Therefore, we have a procedure to fill any gap of size at least uh, two without increasing the answer. So what we are left with are the gaps of length one. And again, if the neighboring fragments consist of the same letter, then we can put the other letter inside the gap to separate them. So the only challenging case are fragments of the different letters separated by the gap of length one. One important thing to notice is that although the gaps longer than one or uh, gaps of length one joining the fragments of the same letters could be analyzed independently, this is not the case with these challenging gaps. In the example below, putting A in the first missing position would increase the length of the fragment of A to 4. So it's better to extend the shorter fragment of B's. But if we make the same reasoning for the second missing position, we also replace it with B, creating the fragment of B's of length 4. So when analyzing these challenging gaps, we have to analyze the whole sequences of fragments uh, with alternate letters separated by the gaps of length one. So let's suppose we have such a sequence and let's denote by K the length of the longest fragment. In our case, K will be equal to three. What I claim is that the optimal answer for such a sequence is either k or k plus 1. Why is that? Obviously, the answer must be at least k because we already have a fragment of such length. And it's easy to construct a solution of size k plus 1. We just fill each gap with the letter to the left of it. Increasing the length of each fragment except the last one by exactly one. So the remaining question is, can we get the answer of exact k? And once the k is fixed, we can test it using a greedy approach. We iterate over fragments from left to right, and every time the length of the current fragment is shorter than k, then we can safely extend this fragment by one letter without increasing the answer. So we do it by filling the gap to the right of this fragment and, uh, and thanks to that, the letter in this gap won't increase the length of the next fragment in the sequence. On the other hand, if the length of the current fragment is equal to k, then we are forced to put uh, into the gap to the right of this fragment a different letter, which will extend the next fragment in the sequence and possibly will create uh, another forced filling of the gap, or it will create a fragment of length bigger than k, 
and will show a proof that we cannot achieve length k as the answer. Of course, once again, this test can be implemented in linear time over the length of the sequence. Okay, so finally we are ready to present the whole algorithm. First, we iterate over the string to extract from it the sequences of challenging gaps. Then we analyze these sequences independently. In each sequence, we calculate the length k of the longest fragment and then greedily try to construct a solution with the answer of k. If it's not possible, then the answer for this sequence is k plus 1. As the answer of the algorithm, we return the maximum length of the fragment in the string and maximal of the answers for the challenging sequences. The time complexity of this algorithm is linear in the length of the string. Although this algorithm is not very complicated and has nice linear complexity, implementation-wise it can be simplified even more. Observe that the reasoning we did locally uh, within one challenging sequence, that the answer for the sequence is either k or k plus 1, uh, can be done globally. If we denote by k the longest fragment in the whole string, then the answer is either k or k plus 1. And the reason is the same. We already have a fragment of length k, and it's easy to construct a solution with length k plus 1 by increasing the length of each fragment at most 1 to the right. So the idea is to implement a greedy test over the whole string to find whether the answer is equal to k. And the idea is to move from left to right over the fragments and uh, fill a missing positions only if it's absolutely necessary. That is, when a position is preceded by a fragment of length exactly k. I think we are ready to see how it will look like in practice. First, uh, we replace uh, our string with a list of uh, letters. Since in Python strings are immutable and we like to change uh, the string s during the uh, greedy algorithm. Next, we declare a variable for an answer, and we would like to initialize it with the length of the longest fragment uh, in the string. So I will need a helper function, uh, let's call it fragments, uh, that will uh, return a list of fragments in uh, the string, and each fragment uh, will be specified by its initial position i and its length d. So here I only need uh, the lengths of these fragments and I will take the maximum from this length. So now I know the value of k and uh, once again I would like to uh, iterate over the fragments now uh, by performing the uh, greedy algorithm. So every time when I see the fragment of length d, uh, I will see whether I need to put uh, a forced uh, letter after this fragment. So if this is not the end uh, of the string and the letter just uh, after our fragment is a gap, then I will need to uh, fill this letter uh, with something else than the letter of uh, my fragment. So here I will say that this is either a if the letter in my the letters in my fragment are b's, or else it's b. So after this. Uh, I will have all my forced uh, letters placed uh, in the gaps. And once again, I can uh, calculate the length of the uh, longest uh, fragment, because uh, maybe this forced letters uh, created a fragment of size k plus 1. 
and at the end I need to return the answer. All right, so uh, one thing we are missing is this uh, function fragments. Um, so it will iterate over the word till the end of the string. And here I will have a helper variable d which will uh, store the length of the, uh, of the fragment. And while I'm still in the string and I'm still reading the same uh, letters as the first letter of the of the fragment, I will just increase the the length. And if uh, the first letter uh, was not uh, was not a question mark, so uh, I have a real fragment consisting of fixed letters then I will return this fragment uh, as the next uh, fragment on the list. And uh, actually, I won't be creating uh, a list. I will use the Python uh, construct yield uh, that actually uh, makes this uh, function fragments a generator. So this construct said, yes, I have uh, another element uh, uh, to generate, and this generator will be stopped here until uh, the next uh, element uh, will be requested by the uh, function that called this generator. So after we generated uh, the next fragment, we will increase the current position by the length of this uh, fragment. So there's a subtle point here. So in order of this program to be correct, uh, actually it's important that the fragments function is a uh, generator because thanks to that it works correctly uh, in the context of this uh, greedy um, procedure that changes the contents of this underlying string. All right, I think we are ready to uh, compile and run the code. It compiles successfully and uh, work on the test cases. And when judged by uh, Codality servers, it will get 100 points for correctness and performance.